Following the convergence of Typhoon Haiquei and monsoonal forces, the Pearl Delta region and Hong Kong experienced unprecedented rainstorms from the evening of September the 7th. Shenzhen broke seven meteorological records, surpassing a 71-year benchmark, while Hong Kong issued a black rainstorm warning due to the heaviest rainfall since 1884, an event now termed the Century Black Rain. The adverse weather conditions escalated to a crisis in Shenzhen, forcing authorities to release floodwaters from reservoirs in the middle of the night. Shockingly, the new territories in Hong Kong transformed into flood discharge area for Shenzhen, exacerbating the already dire situation in Hong Kong, which was grappling with the effects of the century black rain. Adding to the outrage, the Hong Kong government only notified its citizens 16 minutes before Shenzhen began discharging floodwaters, leaving no time for necessary preparations. At 11.05pm on September 7th, the Hong Kong Observatory issued a black rainstorm warning signal. The rainstorm broke a 139-year record with a precipitation amount of 158 millimetres in the first hour, starting at 11 p.m. As of noon on September the 8th, the observatory continued to maintain the black rainstorm warning, marking the longest duration of such warning since records began. The observatory reported that as of noon on September the 8th, most areas in Hong Kong had accumulated rainfall reaching 300 millimetres, with the eastern and southern districts of Hong Kong Island exceeding 500 millimetres. The torrential downpour compounded with the flood discharge from Shenzhen resulted in severe flooding in multiple areas across Hong Kong. Many citizens remarked they had never witnessed such heavy rainfall in their lifetimes. Numerous videos on social media and reports from Hong Kong media outlets reveal streets resembling rivers, with floods rushing into subway stations, paralyzing trains and severely obstructing citywide public transport, pushing the city close to a standstill. Specific regions, notably the North District and the New Territories and the Eastern District of Hong Kong Island, have been severely affected. In Taiwan, located on the eastern side of Hong Kong Island, roads have been significantly damaged, making it impossible even for ambulances. Furthermore, pedestrian pathways have been washed away, exposing underlying pipelines and conduits. In the same area, the car park in the Wan Sui estate was flooded with water levels nearing 2 metres, submerging numerous vehicles. Similarly, Shaw K1 faced torrential mountain floods with a significant amount of water, mud and boulders cascading down the hills of Yu Hing Road, damaging several vehicles. Several subway stations were also submerged, with the Wan Tai Sing station on the Kowloon Peninsula being notably affected, as yellow muddy waters cascaded down the escalators and stairs like waterfalls, reaching calf level depth and forcing an early closure of the station. Moreover, parts of Hong Kong Station, Nam Chun Station, Chai Wan Station and Shun Shui Station were temporarily closed due to flooding. The MTR Corporation stated that it would take time to manage the floodwaters and carry out necessary repairs. Public transportation services on most roads in Hong Kong were halted, with only limited bus services resuming on the morning of the 8th. Cross-border facilities like the Lantan and Mankam Tow checkpoints also suspended operations due to flooding in the underground areas. In the aftermath of the severe weather event, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange was forced to suspend its operations, and as of noon on September the 8th, trading remained halted. Additionally, the Hong Kong Hospital Authority has disclosed that as of 1.15pm on September the 8th, at least 110 individuals have been admitted for treatment due to injuries sustained during the downpour. Criticism is growing over the government's slow response to the crisis. The government only declared a citywide schools shutdown at 5.30am on September the 8th, following the halt of several bus and tram services at around 4am. Additionally, 
The Labor Department postponed the extreme conditions work arrangements announcement until 7 a.m. The flood release from Shenzhen into Hong Kong has sparked outrage amongst Hong Kong citizens, with some airing their grievances on X, formerly known as Twitter. They accuse the Shenzhen authorities of prioritizing their own safety by diverting floodwaters to Hong Kong. There were even satirical remarks thanking the Chinese Communist Party in Shenzhen for sending a great flood to Hong Kong. Some also remarked, "Protect Shenzhen and abandon Hong Kong seems rational. Let Hong Kong become another Zhuzhou." Zhuzhou is a county that was sacrificed during Beijing and Shanghai flood water release. The Chinese government, however, has been vehemently denying any responsibility for the flooding in Hong Kong. According to a report by the mainland Chinese media outlet The Paper, Wang Changxiao, the director of disaster prevention at the Shenzhen Emergency Management Bureau, stated that the decision to discharge water was due to levels surpassing the warning line following a torrential downpour in the catchment areas surrounding the Shenzhen Reservoir. Wang further remarked. That the discharge rate at 80 cubic meters per second was relatively small and might not have a significant impact downstream. Wang Changxiao also stated, after Shenzhen Reservoir discharged water, it flowed along the Shenzhen River and then drained into Shenzhen Bay, eventually reaching the sea. Contrary to Wang's statement, Hong Kong media reported an increase in the discharge rate to 120 cubic meters per second three hours later, compounded by heavy rainfall, resulting in widespread flooding in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong government has faced backlash for issuing a notification only 16 minutes before Shenzhen announced the flood discharge, showing apparent disregard for the welfare of Hong Kong citizens. On the night of September the seventh at 11:44 p.m., the Hong Kong government alerted the public that the Shenzhen Reservoir would commence flood discharge at midnight, potentially causing flooding in the northern regions of Hong Kong. During a joint press conference, the Hong Kong Secretary for Security Chris Tan asserted that, according to the notification mechanism in place. Shenzhen is required to inform the relevant Hong Kong departments three hours before initiating flood discharge. But on September the seventh, the Hong Kong police force received notification 45 minutes prior to the discharge and promptly informed the relevant government departments. Consequently, a public announcement was made at 11:44 p.m. to alert citizens across Hong Kong. Tan emphasized that the flood discharge from Shenzhen was a safety measure. Aligned with the established plan to release floodwaters under controlled circumstances during a crisis to safeguard the dam and the well-being of citizens in the vicinity, he maintained that the widespread flooding experienced in many areas of Hong Kong was unrelated to the discharge from Shenzhen. In the wake of unprecedented rainfall, a noted Hong Kong media personality Tao Jie posted on Facebook. That the alleged flooding in Hong Kong due to water diversion from Shenzhen was part of the integration initiative between Shenzhen and Hong Kong. Drawing parallels from the colonial era, Tao Jie narrated two significant advancements in Hong Kong's drainage services. First, in the 1880s, Royal Engineer Albert Chadwick was dispatched from London to conduct multiple inspections in Hong Kong, leading to the formation. Of a segregated system for rainwater and sewage treatment, this policy was emulated by Shenzhen upon its establishment as a special economic zone a century later. Following Typhoon Wanda in 1962, the colonial administration bolstered the drainage system in the new territories by constructing new dams to prevent flooding in low-lying villages. And creating artificial lakes such as High Island Reservoir, complementing the existing Xin Meng Reservoir. It was detailed that during the colonial era, the Drainage Services Department and the Water Supplies Department were separated to facilitate the construction of new satellite towns in the new territories. This move was in line with the development of a comprehensive infrastructure, including road networks, transport systems, and subterranean structures. A complex integrated rainwater discharge master plan was formulated to integrate these developments. 
The methods left behind by the British continue to be employed by the Special Administrative Region's local authorities to this day. Taoje highlighted that during the tenure of Governor MacLehose from 1971 to 1986, active consultations between mainland China and Hong Kong were held concerning collaborative efforts to manage floodwaters in the region surrounding Shenzhen River in the New Territories. However, he observed that the dynamics have significantly shifted under Xi Jinping's regime, with Hong Kong seemingly marginalised and mainland officials allegedly adopting a more lax approach to governance. Furthermore, Tao commented on the swift flooding situation that engulfed both Shenzhen and Hong Kong, criticising the alleged short notice of 16 minutes given for the water release. He noted with irony the spectacle of the catastrophe, likening it to a disaster movie with high-quality special effects. In a turn of events that has left many stunned, the flooding measures that have seemingly sacrificed Hong Kong have not assured the safety of Shenzhen, which is now grappling with widespread flooding. Videos circulating online depict streets in Shenzhen transformed into rivers, with floodwaters reaching up to adult waste levels in certain areas. In some scenes, Vehicles are submerged halfway underwater, leaving owners with no choice but to abandon them to seek safety. Moreover, citizens have reported that indoor recreational areas, particularly those situated at lower ground levels, have not been spared from inundation, with the water levels so high that one could literally catch fish. In an alarming revelation, Mr. Penn, a property owner in Shenzhen, released a video showcasing the devastation caused by the collapse of a wall during the night, which resulted in the crushing of five vehicles. Fortunately, Mr. Penn's vehicle, which was parked adjacent to the site of the collapse, remained undamaged. My car is fine, he said. The impacted vehicles sustained severe damage and deformations, Fortunately, there were no casualties reported. The Shenzhen Meteorological Bureau noted that the city experienced an unprecedented level of rainfall, breaking seven historical records since the initiation of meteorological recording in 1952. These include a maximum two-hour rainfall measurement of 196 mm at Zhengken in Yantian district which also saw a record-breaking three-hour rainfall amounting to 247 millimetres. Furthermore, records were broken at Luohu East Gate, with the six-hour tally reaching 350 millimetres, while Luohu Xiaowutong surpassed the 12-hour, 24-hour, 48-hour and 72-hour rainfall records. The torrential rains have propelled the water levels at Shenzhen reservoirs to critical thresholds. Responding to this, the Shenzhen Flood, Drought and Wind Prevention Command Office issued an urgent notice on the night of the 7th, announcing that flood discharge measures would begin at 15 minutes past midnight, a 15-minute delay compared to the discharge initiation time communicated by the Hong Kong government. Similar to Hong Kong, there has also been a delay in notifying the residents about the flood discharge from the reservoirs in Shenzhen. Local residents pointed out that the Shenzhen Evening News only issued a flood discharge notice seven minutes in advance through its public account. Moreover, an official WeChat account known as Shenzhen Release, touted for its authority and promptness, disseminated the information at 70 minutes past midnight, two minutes after the discharge commenced. Some netizens harshly criticised the authorities, accusing them of purposefully causing more loss to the people by releasing water in the dead of the night without any warning, a practice observed in previous instances in Hebei and Zhengzhou. They went on to label the reservoirs as weapons wielded by the government to perpetrate harm on its citizens. The flooding situation in Shenzhen exacerbated, affecting not only Hong Kong, but also aggravating conditions in the Luohu district, an area already experiencing high rainfall. As a result, many residents living on the ground floors of affected streets were advised to relocate to safer, higher grounds. 
In response to the escalating situation, emergency announcements were made declaring a one-day work stoppage for businesses and residents in the Lawhu district. Videos circulating online show that areas surrounding the Shenzhen train station entrances and exits have been submerged, causing the suspension of train services between Shenzhen and Guangzhou, the provincial capital, and stranding approximately 100 individuals at the station. According to emergency notification issued by Shenzhen Public Transportation Management Bureau, normal operations to facilitate passenger movement into and out of the station could not be organised before 12pm on September 8. Consequently, regular city buses, taxis and road passenger vehicles were suspended until noon. According to a report by Hong Kong 01, aside from the Lohu district, it was business as usual in other areas of Shenzhen. However, this decision has been met with criticism from numerous workers who were compelled to attend work despite the adverse weather conditions. Many expressed their frustration with remarks such as, after a whole day of rain and flooding that even submerged cars, we still have to go to work. Is the life of a student more valuable than that of a worker? Local residents attribute the severity of the flooding not only to the heavy rains, but predominantly to the inadequacies of Shenzhen's drainage system. As previously noted by the commentator Tao Jie, while Shenzhen's drainage system was designed in the 70s and 80s, influenced by Hong Kong's framework, it has not met the standards set by Hong Kong, citing issues such as fewer stormwater drains, smaller pipes, inadequate drainage network, and narrow rivers that impede the flow of water. Consequently, the city experiences significant urban flooding annually during the rainy season. This disastrous flooding episode was not confined to Shenzhen. Cities including Zhuhai, Guangzhou, Foshan, Dongguan, and Meizhou in Guangdong province also faced similar adversities. Dongguan, situated in the northern part of Shenzhen, has recorded its highest rainfall in the last 15 years, resulting in severe urban flooding in several towns. A distressing scene from Boyan community in Humen Township has been circulating widely on the internet, showing a car engulfed in flames amidst the deluge. According to officials from the Boyan community, the fire department arrived promptly and managed to extinguish the fire, confirming no casualties were reported. Furthermore, numerous road tunnels have been submerged, transforming into virtual rivers with water levels reaching the chest height in some areas. Emergency services have been diligently rescuing stranded individuals. The local government has issued a red warning for heavy rain, which remains in effect for 20 towns in Dongguan as of 7.30am on September 8th. Various schools, kindergartens and training institutions in towns such as Humen and Houjie have suspended their classes due to the warning. Videos online also reveal that Foshan has experienced road flooding, with locals popping their cars up with benches to avoid water damage. Several areas in Guangzhou and Zhuhai have also initiated class suspensions due to the issuance of red rainstorm warnings. The Guangdong Emergency Management Department has advised all departments via its official WeChat account to seriously address the potential risks of geological disasters and urban flooding. The notice stressed an early disaster risk assessments and swift escalation of emergency responses as per duty distribution and contingency plans. Something else worth mentioning is that several days before the torrential rain struck on September the 4th, a remarkable phenomenon was observed in the skies over Hong Kong, capturing the attention of many locals. In the twilight hours of that day, a remarkable red dragon cloud appeared in the sky, stretching vertically and dominating the skyline. Citizens from various districts, including Sha Ting's Po Hon Estate, Kowloon's Choi Wan, Hang Hon Pier, Hong Kong Island's Quarry Bay, and Fan Ling were quick to capture the striking scene with their mobile phones. Reportedly, not only did residents witness this extraordinary phenomenon, but those in Fan Ling also managed to photograph what appeared to be the head of the dragon within the cloud formations. 
Images circulated by the citizens revealed that the cloud bore a vivid red hue, with formations resembling the head of a creature, presenting a rather mystical sight in the sky. This rare and fascinating spectacle has been a topic of considerable discussion and wonder among the residents. Current affairs commentator Pan Zuohong noted in a media interview that he too had witnessed the so-called dragon cloud circulating online on that day, describing it as a rocket cloud. He explained, not only in Hong Kong, but a vertical cloud formation was also observed in Jinan on the mainland. Additionally, on the 3rd, several citizens in various parts of Hong Kong witnessed a solar halo, a phenomenon where a ring surrounds the sun. This solar halo can symbolize bankruptcy, indicating that a city has fallen into bankruptcy. Pan further elaborated, if the cloud column was caused by an aeroplane, there should have been several similar cloud columns in the sky, given the numerous flights over Hong Kong. However, there was only one red column seen that day. Some have described it as a rising dragon, while others interpret it as an ominous sign, suggesting that the dragon energy of Hong Kong has dissipated, he said. As Hong Kong grapples with a once-in-a-century flood disaster, the appearance of the red dragon cloud in the skies a few days ago adds an eerie and unfortunate coincidence to the current circumstances, fueling online debates and theories, with netizens describing it as a harbinger of doomsday, stairway to heaven, and a premonition of adverse weather changes, amongst others. Furthermore, analysts believe that this could be a sign of worsening weather conditions, while others speculate that it could be a contrail created by an aircraft, a phenomenon commonly referred to as aircraft clouds. The discussions continue as the region braces for ongoing climatic challenges.